welcome to Inside the Tape with Greg Cosell. I'm Jeff Mosher alongside Adam Kaplan. And of course, we bring in the king of tape breakdown, Greg Cosell. This is the second episode of the new season on Inside the Birds, Inside the Tape with Greg Cosell. And of course, Greg, the Eagles coming off a uh, a gut-wrenching loss for a lot of the yeah. fans. Uh, they were leading, you know, there in the fourth quarter and they wind up losing 22 to 21 so there's really a lot to unpack uh one always as we always do we start off with an overall assessment and i'm gonna ask you this i mean you watch a lot of tape yeah so sure. you know what what problems run deep and you also know what can be corrected and i think a lot of people right now want to know specifically with defense but even offense right when you're watching this eagles game against the falcons and you're seeing some major breakdowns and things that you shouldn't be seeing how easily do you think some of this is just correctable and coaching or how much of it do you think is, man, the personnel I'm seeing on the field, I don't think can get the job done. I think there's two ways to answer that, Jeff. And I just want people to understand that I didn't know what you were going to ask me. So this is not something we planned. Correct. So I think there's two answers to that. One breakdowns can be corrected. Okay. Um, those, those are coaching points. Those kinds of things can be corrected. They tend to happen early in the season for many reasons, which people probably know, because a lot of those players don't play a lot of snaps at game speed in the preseason. And sometimes they don't even play together during the preseason. So those things can be corrected. One of the biggest issues that teams have, and the Eagles are having it right now on defense, is when you're good players that you are counting on to be difference makers. Because not only are there tactics in the NFL, but there's also individual matchups. That's You talk to a lot of people and they'll say it's a matchup game. Sure. So when individual players do not play well, and through two weeks, there are a couple of players that I know that they counted on, on we're talking defense now, to play at a high level. One is Jalen Carter, who has not been a factor through two weeks. The other, and we had talked about this during the, during the offseason, is Huff, okay, is Bryce Huff. Now, Bryce Huff was a really good pass rusher as a designated pure pass pass rusher for the Jets, playing anywhere from 17 to 23 snaps a game. And he was really good at that. Now, the Eagles obviously signed him to play 50 snaps a game. That was a question which all three of us discussed, you know, not to rip Huff. We just didn't know. It's an unknown because he hadn't done it. So there was no right or wrong answer. But so far, he's not been a factor either. And and that's, you know, those two players have been a little bit of a concern. Um, you know, Jordan Davis is also still a concern. And now he's in year three. So you just start to wonder if, you know, he's declaring what he is, because mm -hmm. by year three, normally players declare what they are. So when you look at the D line right now, now, could this change? Of course, it could change. It's two games and and to use the old cliche, the season is a marathon, not a sprint. But, you know, this this is what we have on tape through two games. Hmm. And how about offensively from a big picture standpoint, before we get into any tape of any individuals, offensively, no A.J. Brown. That was a big storyline going up against what we said was going to be a, a pretty good Falcons defense and Falcons yeah. secondary. Yeah. I, I To be honest with you, I've been impressed. With their run game, I think Saquon Barkley has looked very, very good. He's looked spry, quick, light on his feet. He showed some really nice lateral agility and the ability to reaccelerate. I think he's looked very good. I think when I watch the tape, and obviously I watch it very closely, um, I think we've seen some really nice concepts by Kellen Moore. I think the offense looks like it has a chance to be a very good offense based on personnel and 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 schematics. So overall. You know, I've been pretty impressed. We've seen through two games, Becton at uh, right guard, I think, has looked very good. I think Jurgens has played well. Lane Johnson is Lane Johnson. Um, you know, so I think offensively, and we'll get to some things that we need to discuss that are very important to discuss, that I hope they're discussing in the building, however they go about discussing it. We're not there. But I, I think there's been a lot of positives. And I know for fans – who expected them to, you know, blow the Falcons out, particularly if the Falcons scored 10 points week one, you know, mm -hmm. they probably are thinking, what am I out of my mind? I'm, I'm watching the tape. The tape tells me the, you know, the eye in the sky does not lie. That's Greg, right. if, if we go to defense first, 
the run defense, look, I, I know some fans who defenses have not always been great against the run for whatever reason. Right. Uh, but look, the run defense has been a struggle. We've we've talked about since we've known you, because we all know coaches and they don't worry too much about run defense. It's always explosive plays, particularly in the pass game. But you can't just ignore it. No. What, what are you seeing now from the run defense? Why has it been such an issue? But it's funny you say that. And by the way, I'll get to that in a second. But also keep in mind, until the final drive, the Falcons only had 15 points. Right. So I'm not saying you want to ignore the run defense. But on the other hand, um, it wasn't as if they they put up 30 and they were just killing the Eagles. Um, but I would say they really struggled with the the outside zone, the, the mid to wide outside zone, whatever, you know, different coaches call it different things. Um, and one of the things I've learned from coaches over the years, and this goes back a long time ago, it even goes back to when Mike Shanahan was the uh, coach of the Denver Broncos and they had Terrell Davis, um, a free agent who, you know, obviously is a Hall of Famer with four ridiculously good years in that outside zone run game. And and defensive coaches telling me that the biggest mistake you can make playing an outside zone run game is have your defensive line run laterally because that just creates exactly what the offense wants. And I thought the Eagles did too much of that on Monday night. And what that does is it creates seams and gaps for a great back in B. John Robinson. And so we saw that the second level defenders, uh, Vaughn and, and um, Dean, really had a hard time because this, the O-line could just climb right up to them and block them. You, Jeff, you mentioned this the other night on uh, with the Patreon group that how many times did we see Bon get cut on the backside? It seemed four or five times that happened, you know, and that's what happens because the whole point of mid to outside zone is to stretch the front side and then cut off or seal the backside. And somewhere along the line, that creates a gap for the running back. And that happened too many times. Wow. That's, that's, that's a little concerning. Just one, one additional question, Greg, off of that. So they played this, they, they played Zach Robinson, who, who comes from a West Coast scheme, right? And we'll, we'll preview the Saints game when we, we do the pregame show. I just want to get people familiar with what the Saints are doing. Are, they, are the Saints running? Is it, do you see similarities uh, between what? what yeah, the because they have, the they have Kubiak, doing? who comes from the yep. Shanahan school and, and somewhat the McVay school. It's all the same run game school in, in terms of concepts. And we'll get into detail with this, but Alvin Kamara this past week ran out. So they ran outside zone phenomenally well. So they're going to see the Uh-oh. Eagles feel like, hey, we're going to at least test that. But very often, I will say this, guys, very often teams are not beat by the exact same thing in the NFL two weeks in a row. Sure. Because they practice it now. I mean, they're going to look at the tape, the coaches, and go, this can't happen again. And they're going to coach. Now, I'm not saying it will or won't. I'm just saying – historically that the exact same thing doesn't happen. Greg, why don't we take a look at some of the, some clips that we have that might illustrate exactly what we're talking about. Okay, Greg. So what we have here is one of those wide zones uh, you were referring yeah. to. And you see the Falcons are under center, which was an adjustment. They didn't do that a whole lot against no. in week one. And uh, the Eagles are aligned here to try to stop it. So I'll, I'll slowly let it go. And you describe what happens here. Well, it's an outside zone run. Yeah, and you can tell, just stop it for a sec. You know, mm -hmm. you can always tell what kind of zone run it is by the path of the back. If you if you look at the back, because sometimes the offensive line, you know, they, they tell you too, but look at, at Robinson, the way he turns his body to the outside. So look at him right there, guys. You see, right yep. now you can tell he's going outside. So now there is quick penetration inside of them, but that block is easy to be made. And look at everybody else. They're just running laterally. They're, in fact, they're moving backwards, okay? Mm. So now he easily gets to the second level, and you can see that, you know, it becomes, you know, it doesn't seem like a long run, but you're obviously not, you know, nine, 10 yard runs or long runs. Um, but basically, um, if you're going to run laterally, um, and and, and I'm, I, I can't see the number of who that is, but they're, they're, the two guys are just running laterally. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I think they're in they're in nickel, are they not? Yeah, the Eagles defended uh, yeah. the the Falcons, Greg and Nickel, pretty much the whole night. There weren't right. that so many five man who is Who are they running at? They're running at Devontae Maddox. Yes, uh, so, the nickel right up here yeah, at the top of the that's screen. That's another thing that we've seen through the years. Mm -hmm. I can remember this goes back a number of years. When Clyde Edwards-Alaire was the feature back for the Chiefs, 
and they ran constantly at uh, at Avanti Maddox in a game. At, I'm going back probably three, four years. Yep. So, you know, a lot of teams will run at the nickel because you can see Maddox, all he's doing is jumping outside. You know, right. he's not really interested in taking that on because he's not really a run defender. Here's an overhead. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, now, Greg, sure. talk about Sweat here. At first, it looked to me like he did not set the edge but I wonder if he was stunting with a Jomo and then 97 very, see, was playing. not able to get outside because the right, left guard did a nice job of kind of pinning him in, but so that he couldn't run around. And then it's hard to him. know. Yeah, it, it could look like that. You'd have to know what the call is. He, right. he jumped in. Now, if, if they're not stunting and he just jumped inside, that's his then bad, that's, right? that's yeah. a problem. Yeah. But you could be right. But then look what happens with the Jomo. Is mm -hmm. he just gets? I mean, he's three yards from from the line of scrimmage. Right, and then obviously you can see and look at all that Dean space. Here. Yeah. yeah, look how easily because once a Jomo gets pushed there, Dean is done. Right, because he has a Jomo in his lap. There's nothing he can do. Right. All right, Greg. Here's another run. This is under center again. B. John Robinson again, um, and you see here. I'll pause it. I mean, yeah, look, 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 look again. Okay. That hole. If you go back a little bit, Jeff, you'll see exactly mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Look at a Jomo. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, look how he he gets he he's moving laterally and he he's he's three yards off the ball. Literally, right. before the handoff, he's two two yards off the ball. Yep, because he's moving laterally. He's here. moving laterally. He's, so you would say he's playing into their hand. They're, the Eagles' defensive line is doing what the Falcons wanted. They're it. just stretching them out. They're taking them where they want to go. So now here, instead of, of Robinson going um, sort of it, the same hole he went in on the previous play we showed, he's mm -hmm. going to cut back inside here because that's where the hole shows itself. That's right. what his own run is, is – you know, you stretch it, and then the hole appears. And and uh, is that Bond being cut again on the on the backside? Yep. So we have the yeah. right guard just diving yeah, at his ankle and knocking so him. So this the this plays out, sprees it right there. They have the front side stretched, the mm -hmm. back side sealed and cut, and then the hole shows up. If you show this from the end zone, you people will see it clear as a bell. He hits a different hole on this run than the the first run we showed mm -hmm. because the way it gets stretched. Start, stop it right there. Beginning yep. with a Jomo, a Jomo, Dean, and Sweat, they're all stretched. Yep. And then the yep. back Go. side is cut and sealed. You see how that it's clear yep. the bell? There's the cut, and Bond's Robinson getting cut right there. Bond's By the cut. way, I mean, you can see Bond has no shot. He's on yep. the ground as B. John right. just rolls right cut. by him. Yeah. But you see that this is a different hole than mm -hmm. the one Robinson hit on the previous, even though the run call is the same. Right. Greg, you know, you know what this reminds me of? Alex Gibbs. Yeah. Yeah. The late Alex Gibbs, who's the father of zone of uh, yeah. uh, cut blocking, would you say? Well, the zone run game. Zone run game, right, and cut blocking. Yeah, so, yeah. So, mm -hmm. Jeff, the point yep. is, is that when you have an outside zone run game, you can hit different holes based on how the front side stretches and the back side cuts. The first clip we saw, Robinson stayed outside on his path because mm -hmm. you start on your path. I remember – speaking to coaches over the years and with the outside zone run game. And they say for the first two, three steps, there's a defined path, right? Then you're reading. However, it plays out. However, right. they teach it. Some guys teach it differently than others, but the first three steps are defined and then you have to read it. So on the first run we saw, he was able to stay on his outside path because that's how the hole showed on the second run. They stretched it so far outside Mm -hmm. Because the Eagles played it poorly, that he was able to cut inside off the stretch. Now, Greg, I could have made seven or eight more clips. I know that. Believe it me, it was I so the simplistic date. that they all would have been a variation of those two. One, Correct. which is a stretch. One, which was more of a middle zone. Like you said, same kind of concepts there. So th those are all the only two we need to to really for people to understand exactly what was going on there and what needs to be corrected very quickly. Because as you mentioned. The Saints will do the same thing. I want to close off defense just asking you, without any clip, just in general, the pass rush, not there. Nolan Smith, not there. Bryce Huff, uh, Josh Sweat, BG. What, what in general stood out to you about the lack of pass rush? There, there's a couple of ways to look at pass rush. If, if you're struggling with individuals winning one-on-one, -on -one, because the pass rush does come down very often to one-on-one -on -one matchups, then you've got to try to create pass rush. And you can do that any number of ways. 
You can do that still with your front four group with stunts, multiple stunt concepts. Try to create opportunities for your D alignment through the use of stunts, where you, in a sense, break down protection. Stunts can do that. The other thing, and I remember for years, Rod Rust, uh, who passed away years ago, sat in my office on, on Mondays for five years. Mm. And then one of his mantras was, if you can't get there with four, you got to bring five because you got to impact the quarterback. If you can't impact the quarterback, it's really hard to play good pass defense. You know, so right. at some point, if you can't get there with four, you have to bring five. Now, obviously, that changes your coverage concepts because football at its core is a numbers game. Because if you can rush four, you have seven in coverage. If you rush five, you have six in coverage. So it changes the numbers game and the way you can defend space. Because if you're playing zone, it's all about space. Because the offense is trying to get into space with their routes. Right. But at the end of the day, you've got to impact the quarterback. If you can't do that, I mean, just look at the final drive. And we don't need to go over every play in detail. No, I did um, want to ask you about that, though. The final well, drive, they could not get Mm -hmm. They got a little pressure on the first play and Cuds Cousins did an excellent job sliding to his right, resetting his throwing platform and making a great throw to Pitts. But other than that, they got no pressure on him. I just want to ask about Bryce Huff. Anything particular you see? Is he getting taken out of the plays easily? What, what do you see from Bryce Huff? I mean, Bryce Huff's basically an edge pass rusher and that's his game. And he just hasn't been able to do it yet. You know, so, I mean, I can't tell you why. No, but... anything in particular you're seeing. I'm just asking. No, you take. no, he's okay. just, he's not, he's not doing what he's supposed okay, to be no. doing is okay. which is rush the quarterback mm -hmm. but they're not getting any interior pressure either right um Quinion mitchell on the final drive i know you yeah. talked to our patreon members uh rookie mistakes just describe them a little bit there yeah i mean particularly on the um i think it was the second play the um mooney? yeah it's the mooney 21 yarder that was the second play on the final drive um they basically ran what we call a smash concept which is you have a an intermediate route and you have a flat route and you're basically throwing off the flat defender, which, or the corner, which in this case was Quinion Mitchell. Now in a situation like this, you don't want to give up 20 yards. I mean, obviously they have no timeouts. You don't mm. want to give up 20 yards. So he jumped the flat route, which is just poor situational awareness. Um, you know, let them throw the ball six yards. And then you rally up and you tackle them. And ideally, you can even tackle them in bounds. And they have no timeouts and the clock keeps running. But he jumped the flat route instead of sinking with some depth with Mooney on the corner route, making it a tougher throw for Cousins. So it became an easy throw for Cousins. It became a practice throw for Cousins. All right. Well, well, that that would make sense as far as rookie mistakes would go. And I'm sure that that's one of those things we talk about where you can watch a tape, you can correct it. And the next time that that's happens, that's a correctable mistake. That's, right. you know, you know, you sit down, you talk to him, you know, look, that's the kind of stuff you're talking to your players about all the time, how to play situations, you know, what's important in given situations, you know, that that's football. Football is a, game of situations and you have to understand besides all your techniques and all those things you have to understand the situations and games all right good stuff let's transition to the offense um obviously we talked about saquon barkley you you were impressed with the rushing offense yep with barkley on the field um how about you said you mentioned you thought kellen moore at least conceptually brought some interesting things to the table in the game is there anything that really jumped out at you or that you liked that you thought was either executed well or could have been executed well. I mean, I just think he does a nice job with with the, the run game. There's some diversity to it. Um, I think he does a nice job with his pass concepts, providing defined, clean throws for Jalen Hurts. And we'll get into the fact that he did not throw them in this game, particularly in some critical higher leverage situations. But the throws are there. The, the, the schemes are there. It's good stuff. I mean, you know, it's I don't know what else to say, but, you know, Jalen missed basic stuff that was mm. called, you know, stuff's called for a reason. OK, right. when you see certain route concepts and bottom line is every team in the league essentially runs the same stuff. It's just how they get to it. Formations, who is running it? You know, do they get to it with motion? Do they you know, but essentially there's not a thousand route concepts. You know, everybody 
kind of runs the same stuff. Every mm -hmm. once in a while, there's a tweak on a play, and you go, wow, that's a pretty cool tweak. But it's essentially the same stuff. So, and, and when your quarterback is struggling, what most coaches do is they go back to basic concepts that are basic reads, like snag flat to the boundary. You know, it's it's a one read throw. You read the underneath defender. If he expands to the flat, you throw the snag route. If he stays inside and, and blocks the snag, you throw it to the flat. I mean, right. you, you go with basic stuff to get your quarterback comfortable. You see that a lot with young quarterbacks. Just try to get him comfortable with basic concepts. All right. Well, we're going to take a look at one of those uh, concepts and quarterback plays that you mentioned with Jalen Hurts in one second. So, Greg, this was a very critical play that we have up here. Why don't you just set the scene before we even run it? Well, this was fourth and four on their second possession. One can debate whether they should have kicked a field goal or gone for it. They chose to go for it. I'm sure the analytics said that. Now, Jeff, just as we get into this, this is going to be important to let you know that we're going to go forward and we're going to have to go back because there's two sides to this. Got now, Jalen could have worked either side and made a first read throw. So I don't know how he specifically coached as far as which side to look at, but he had a first read throw to either side, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's start to the boundary side of the field. You see Barkley offset and you see Dallas Goddard. This mm -hmm. is what we call a one-by-three set. Goddard is the single receiver to the short side of the field. He's got a reduced split. So I just want the audience to focus on that side of the field, okay? Now, when you do run it, and don't run it yet, but what the audience is going to see is Barkley is going to go in short motion, basically behind Goddard. The whole point of this was he's going to run a quick route into the flat, right at the sticks, with Goddard as his natural pick. So that to the right side, that's the first read throw to that side. It's available. And that's the side he looks. This ball should have been thrown. You can run it now. Let the audience focus on Goddard and Barkley. Okay, you see that? Barkley's in motion. Boom, throw him the ball. He's wide open. It's a first read throw. They did not put Barkley in motion for his health. They put Barkley in motion to create the natural pick. And he runs the quick speed out, whatever you know their term is for that route. But he's wide open. So if you're working to the right, that's where the throw should go, okay? Now, if you take it back, and by the way, just so people can see, go forward a little bit more, stop. There's yeah. no pressure on, on Jalen Hurts, no mm -hmm. pressure at all. So this throw, if he worked to the right, which it appears that's where he's looking, that's easily available. Okay, now let's go back to now. the Now, it's got to be up now, yeah. Okay. So now let's go to the other side. The other side of the formation, they also have a first read throw. What they have is they have Covey in the slot and Dotson outside of him, okay? Covey is going to basically run and set a pick on the corner, and Smith, excuse me, Dotson is going to run a delayed slant, a first read throw that's wide open for a first down. And by the way, they even had Smith on the corner route wide open as part of a smash concept if if Jalen so chose. But if you run it now, watch Covey from number two in the slot running right at the corner and then Dotson running a delayed in-breaker. First read throw, wide open, okay? All he had to do was pick a side, make either throw, wide open, first read throw, okay? Really well-schemed, well-designed, fourth and four call. Should have been an easy completion. Now, the key point, again, go back right there or go a little further. Again, the bottom line point, there's no pressure on Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. Where is he going? He has a first read throw to either side. Should have been an easy first step. This is what I meant when I said Kellen Moore has designed some really nice stuff in critical situations. This is this should have been easy. Yeah, he's got two. Like you said, he's got Barkley open here on the bottom of the screen. Dotson open. At and now top. go a little further if he stayed in the pocket and really wanted to work left. Look at Smith. Devontae. Screaming Ford. open. Devante, yeah. yeah. If he wanted to stay there and throw the corner out to Smith. Right. So here's mm. what happens. So he runs out of the pocket for no reason at all. And then this happens. You know, and could have been picked. It, it should have been 
first of all, he should have thrown that then because that's, you know, becomes a really tight throw in the red zone. Yeah. But that should have been, that's easy. That's basic, simple stuff that, that needed to be executed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, I, there's nothing else to say. It's not, this is not a personal thing, guys. And I'm sure some people listening are going to take it that way because that's, I've been through that my whole career. I watched the tape. I, I just explained the play. If people can't see what the play clearly was and how open that was, then they're missing something. It, it's built in for to help Jalen or any quarterback. You any see quarterback. That, yeah, a, any quarterback can make those. Th it's built in. This this is th this was schemed up very very well. All right, we have another one. Do you see it here, Greg? And Adam? I do. And I think this was another third down play, was it not? This was. This is this another was third, third down, down play. play. So okay, I'm going to tell you what's going on here before you run it. Okay. There's two parts to this. If he wants to work to the boundary side, that's Devonta Smith. It's third and four. Devonta Smith is going to run the sit route. And by the way, he's going to be open. But if he chooses not to throw it there within the timing, because now the timing has to be just a, a, a beat later, he's going to have Goddard on the other side on what we call a return route. He's going to bend outside and then return inside. So if it's not Smith, which is open, by the way, then he would have Goddard, okay? So mm -hmm. now let's watch this and watch Hurts. Freeze it. You see pressure on Hurts? None. Nope. None. He's already running. He's already left the pocket. You hit your back foot and you stick it on Smith. Right that's, that's the play. That's the play call. Now, if you didn't like Smith, you stay in the pocket, run it a little further, watch Goddard up top. I'm just going to mention that. Yep. I actually thought uh, before you mentioned it that Goddard might have been the first read on this here. It's possible, but I'm saying he, mm -hmm. I, I I would think not, but it's possible. Okay. But the point is Goddard's going to be open on the return route. Right. Either way, you got two options there. But this is one where you got a quick put your foot on the ground, like you said, and stick it. Yeah. yeah. Why move? Why move? Sit in the yeah, pocket. So moves, drive, drive it. And again, you have third and four becomes right. this, and he ends up running around and throwing it away. Yep. You know, this gets into what I talked about to the Patreon group the other night, where I talked about the balance between playing from the pocket with efficiency and making those special plays outside of structure, which we know Jalen Hurts can make. OK, and you know what? He could make three of them against the Saints and maybe they win the game and everybody's going, oh, my God, Jalen is, is sensational. He can do that any time. We know that. But you've got to execute the basic stuff. You have to. You can. There's not an excuse for not executing basic stuff. Well, the Eagles have some work to do there, Greg, and uh, we'll see. And if and now you've mentioned that some these are habits, right? This is a habit that you've seen out of Jalen Hurts at times, where leaving the pocket and not making well, the play and staying there, and those were good examples. I got one more. Well, that it just reminded me of, a, of, of for people who are closer to my age, of an album titled uh, by uh, the Doobie Brothers, "What Were Once Vices Are Now Habits." <laughs> Very nice, and, nice, um, nice. Now, Greg, so, on this one, you might remember he actually gets the first down because he makes an amazing scramble, but he also takes three hits at the end of the run, right. where and it's a fourth down, it's a or I'm sorry, it's a third and long, but it appears, and I'll let you break it down. Well, this was the one where Gainwell was open, yes. right in the middle. Yes. So Gainwell is lined up. Uh, what is he in? This? Empty. It's an empty set, and Gainwell yep. is in. Is stacked behind. Uh, is that Devante? I believe. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. On the right side, top yeah. of the screen here. So as I, you know, show the snap, and you see it's it is a blitz. It's a five man rush, but it looks like he's well protected and picked up there. Uh, and Gainwell, go ahead. Go ahead. You, go, you can describe it. Yeah. Go ahead. I want to see a little more. So again, Ugh. this time, look, this one, I'll give him to some degree the benefit of the doubt because maybe he feels that backside pressure, mm -hmm. but still this ball should be thrown without, yes. he still had time to even set his feet and deliver this football. Right. Yep. And by the way, the defense back to the quarterback, back to the quarterback. So even though Gamewell is short of the sticks here by well, they blew the, yards, the only person no, that's going to no get him is the safety, Gamewell. right? Yeah. They blew the coverage. Yeah. Yeah. So he had a chance to get the ball. And he there. never, Greg, he never saw Gainwell. He put his head down. Yeah. Right. Now watch the hits that he takes. He doesn't even run out of bounds because he wants to get the first down. Yeah. And he winds up running into three guys. Yeah, and, and this is the Jalen factor where he can do this. And 
you know, Adam and I have had this conversation, Jeffy, before I, you know, I spent start spending more time with you. Mm -hmm. Adam and I have had this conversation going back years at the combine and in my office. You know, how do you coach this? Do you say great play, Jalen, or do you show it to him and say, hey, you know, just just hit your back foot and and, and hit Kenny. He's right there. And plus right. he's right in front of him. This right. is not a hard throw. Yeah, I, 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 it, he was so decisive, Greg, two years ago. It really started last season. And, and by the way, yeah. go back a little further, Jeff. Look mm -hmm. at his head. I think he's reading the rush. Mm. I think he's reading the rush. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he looks like he's looking at that edge. Yeah. yeah. And, and Greg, Greg, you've used a term which I thought was phenomenal. Quarterbacks, like uh, guys who are struggling, they break themselves down. Yeah. There's they nothing to do with a pass rush. You, yeah. You're, you're you're looking you're dropping your eyes and you're you're th there's a term that they say feel it don't see it he's seeing it and feeling it and he's forcing himself out when he doesn't have to well i learned that term from ron jaworski 100 years ago um watching tape and he would always talk about the fact that as a quarterback you should never see pressure that you just feel it you never see it you you should never be looking at pressure you should, you know, you feel it. I mean, mm -hmm. look, you play the position long enough. You know, it's like in any sport you play long enough. There's certain things you just feel. But as a quarterback, you should never be looking at the pass rush. I, I could tell you watching tape with you and Jaws when when we watch, you guys would point out Brady and Peyton Manning. And they just had the sixth sense of knowing when to get rid of the football. Not moving, by the way, or, or manipulating the pocket. You manipulate the pocket. Play. See, right. see, I love funny that. funny you say that because a lot of the quarterbacks that come into the league now that are phenomenal athletes, okay? Phenomenal. We've never seen anything like this before because they were always the best athlete on the field from the time they became a quarterback at, you know, 10 years old. As soon as they perceived or felt anything, they would run and they do something special because they were the best athletes on the sure. field. So they didn't really develop kind of the nuances of playing from the pocket. And at some point in the NFL, you have to be able to do that. Let me ask you this. CJ Stroud, uh, who I think is special. He, he is. He has it. He, he been, just has it. He, he well, Okay. Explain that. What, what do you see from Stroud that makes him so good? Well, first of all, he just has an innate feel of timing and anticipation obviously he's not the Eagles quarterback, so we're not breaking down. No, but terms, no, but in terms yeah. of what, what makes him a kid who's only in the second year from a timing standpoint, Greg, feel it and get rid of the football so quick. I can't answer why, but yeah. I can tell you what the tape look like. Yeah. What's it look yeah. like? So what he is ridiculously good at, which is incredibly hard. And I, you know, no one probably knew he was great at this until last year when I noticed it in week two, his second game in the NFL, was he is amazing at throwing the ball into zone windows. He just, if I, if you were sitting with me and I showed you Stroud and, and I'd say, look, there's Nico Collins. He hasn't even started his break yet. And he's going to break into a zone void. And CJ Stroud's already started his delivery. Okay. He just has an innate feel for timing and anticipation. I'm not sure you can teach that kind of feel. Mm. Um, you can talk about it. You can look at an, at an iPad you know, you can draw stuff on the board, but I don't know if you can teach it. C.J. Stroud plays the game at really a high level feel for what he's just intuitively seen. It's really high level. Um, awesome stuff. Jalen's not that guy. No, no, not yet. Maybe someday, but but not yet. Not and, right now. Uh, and maybe we'll and see. And by the way, that doesn't mean he, he has never to, does right. it. We're right. talking to NFL quarterbacks. Right. So we're not going to say a guy never does anything, but – CJ Stroud does it just as a matter of the way in which he plays the position. Right. Awesome stuff. Greg, uh, offense, defense, we broke it down. The Eagles have a lot to correct and not a lot of time. A little bit of a short week. I can't Hopefully wait till we talk Saints. about the Saints, guys, because I tell you what, it's only two game sample. Yeah. But there's a lot of good things to say about the Saints. <laughs> well, we will go through it all on, on the Inside the Birds pregame show, and that'll drop Sunday morning. It'll be myself, Adam, and of course, Greg Cosell. That's going to do it for this edition of Inside the Tape. For Greg Cosell and Adam Kaplan, I'm Jeff Mosher. Hope you enjoy. Catch you on the next one.